Joe, can you hear me? Are you in? Are you even available today, bro? <laughs> ah, got a tinkle. Got it. That's a that's code for take a big shit. <laughs> Trade Eric, what's up, brother? Yeah, guys. So just really quick, just before Joe comes on, just absolute last. Um, uh, well, I close it, but just a absolute last information. If you need any questions answered about the live trading event, August 17th and August 18th, which is our second year anniversary. If you need any questions about the accelerator course, if you're just looking in, want to come into the club monthly, annual or lifetime, and, or you want to, um, just upgrade, you know, just DM me if you're a member, or you can text me at my business line at 213-458-5997. And we will figure out to the best way to suit your needs. That, that's what I can say. So, you know, I think you'll love MIC, man. As you guys can see, it's a wonderful community, man. We've got moderators, a shit ton. We've got a ton of traders who are willing to help each other. And it's just, it's just fun, man. Like MIC is literally the place to be. If MIC was created seven years ago when I first started, dude, Oh my God, man. It would have been a whole different, it, I just would have been a different trader today, man. I had Ready to, you I, are sunshine. Oh yes. There he is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's always, it's always right when Q and A starts. Like every day, it just hits every, you like a brick, week doesn't we it? Do this every week we do this. Like it's right there, and I'm like, damn, I got a tinkle. <laughs> Dude, what do you think? I was like, Bro, I'm not going to be able to hold this one. Bro, what do you think trading diapers are for? I've pissed my pants two times. <laughs> <laughs> so how's your week been, man? What's Dude, up? Dude, it's been it's been good, man. It's been good, bro. I moved back to Cali. I am, I, 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 dude, I, yeah, yeah. My girls got a lot of business out here and, uh, I just decided, I was like, you know what, man, it is so freaking okay. hot that <laughs> I'm, I'm going to buy something in Arizona soon, but until I'm ready to do so and find the perfect property. Cause I was looking, dude, dude, I was looking for a property every single month in this certain community that I wanted. So I'm still searching, Joe. It's like when I'm yeah. ready, dude, I'm probably going to be back and forth. But right now, man, I, I honestly just, so I'm getting my sea legs back in Cali and holy shit, what a toilet, dude. <laughs> <laughs> There's homeless everywhere. There's, it's all breaking down. It's a different bro. world when you go somewhere else and then come back, right? Dude, LA is a fucking toilet, bro. That's why, that's why me and the wife, we just like to visit. Man, you know, dude, we don't go to Southern Cali. We go to Northern Cali. Well, Joe, dude, it's crazy, bro. It's crazy. So I don't know what it looks like in Texas with this pandemic, man. But bro, I'm not kidding. So listen to this, man. I, li I lived in LA. I dude, I'm 30 years old in three days. I'm, I'm 30 on Friday. But I lived in LA 95% of my life. Dude, I left for a year to go to Arizona. I'm back now. Dude, this is not the LA I remember, man. I don't even recognize it, dude. Like the way this, pan hey, thanks guys. The way this pandemic has literally hit, bro. There's restaurants in the streets. Like all my favorite places are kind of closed, man. I'm like, what did I come back to? See the thing right? about Arizona, bro, it was, it was kind of unhit by the pandemic. Like it was kind of normal. It, it, like normal life was so, dude, it's so weird, man. <laughs> Dude, it's, uh, so in Texas, a lot of the good restaurants that I liked are gone now. Those aren't yeah. a thing anymore. Uh, or they're just not open and yet again. So it's, um, dude, it's an adjustment still to this day. It's an adjustment and it's weird. It's weird. That's all I can say is well, it's fucking weird. You know, you know what I would say about it, Joe, is because like, guys, we'll, we'll if you have any questions, definitely write them out. But Joe yeah, and I it's like to make Q and A kinda, time. So, well, Joe and I load like to up on the questions, like a, like a talk show as well. Yep. But definitely get your questions in, and we'll answer them. But Joe, I got to tell you, man, it's like, dude, every single day, I'm like, I, I just count my blessings, dude. I'm like, thank God, I'm a trader. Thank God, my business is online. It's like so many people were hit by this and now dude literally now that i'm back in la and actually seeing it because i didn't see it that much in arizona now i'm seeing it firsthand i'm like oh my god dude just thank god for what we do man and, and oh anybody yeah for that's, real anybody that's struggling and 
trying to hold on for hope. And, you know, every now and then I'll, I'll, I'll get a random, you know, text or something with a guy that's just kind of hit his limit with trading because he hasn't found consistency. He's like, Tosh, man, I don't know if I want to quit altogether. And I'm not even talking, he might not even be a member. I'm not talking about MIC. I'm talking about he might want to quit trading. I'm like, dude, just keep pushing, bro. Just keep putting, like, you will see the light, man. You will see it. Yeah. It's, um, it's such a good job. It's tough, dude. It, it is tough, man. The real world is, it's, it's insane, man. It's, it's truly insane. So, you know, enough about that. I didn't want to get anybody down. It's just, I literally feel for like the first time since the pandemic happened, I'm actually seeing it firsthand. I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah. It's crazy, dude. It's, it's pretty shocking to, to watch everything unfold. It, I'm, you know, I don't even know well, on a where lighter to begin. Note, on a lighter note, as pertaining to trading, apparently the spy hasn't been hit by. Yeah, no, nah, spy got hit by Corona and made a full recovery. Yeah, apparently spy, like <laughs> the best thing that ever happened to spy was Corona. Like, what the hell, dude? It, you know, uh, dude, I said it months ago. I was like, I don't think we're gonna get the dip that everybody wants. Fake it I don't you think make it, round right? two dip is going to, yeah. Aloha said that he said, dude, it's fake it till you make it. And I'm like, yeah, bro. I don't think that second dip is coming. Joe, I don't think every, it's coming. You, you know, you know what would take out the spy, man. I got to tell you, this is kind of just free talk. And literally this is 100% conjecture, but I'll tell you what would take out the spy a second pandemic. It would t- because the reason why everybody's baked into this first one, everybody knows about it. I mean, dude, if you read the headlines, literally like Beirut is getting bombed and the spy is going up, dude. Like there's dude, chaos. I saw that video that Bro, Sykes posted. Holy shit. I like and props to that guy for all the work he does on on uh, oh dude on charities and all kinds of stuff. I saw the million dollar donation that he did to Yemen. I was like, dude, that's some stand up shit right I gotta there. Tell you, that man, is, I, I don't I'm care. Stock trading, real estate, fucking, he could be a grocery sacker. I don't give a shit. That is some. That's some. And cool I've seen shit, those man. videos about the kids, and I'm just like, I'm going to cry. Bro, I'm <laughs> right I'm now. I'm going to cry. <laughs> Bro, I'm at a stage in my life. I don't know whether it's because I'm turning 30 and I'm getting old as shit, but. Bro, I, I got to ask I you a question don't, about that. Too. No, I don't hate on anybody, man. Again, yeah. I, I don't like certain people harming others, but 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 a guy like like that, man, it, it seems like he's doing a lot of good in the world. Yep. Man, I'm yeah, I don't. Him. I have nothing bad to say about any of that. I don't care. Pe- people st- people have conspiracies. They're like, it's just charity donations as write-offs for all the crooked <laughs> shit he does. Well, there's always someone I'm like, shit. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, he did some great shit for some starving children in Yemen, so you can call him an asshole all you fucking want. That Is was it- some <laughs> admirable stump. That was admirable right well, there. Well, bro, here's here's the, look, the one difference <laughs> between, look, there's, and I know we're, I know we're kind of like doing more talk show here, but we'll, we'll get to it. But the thing about the, there's one difference. This is completely unrelated to trading too. This is yeah, just this talking is, about t- people being a good human. You know dude, what I mean? Because that is what we need right now. Bro, the one fundamental difference between people who are poor versus people who are rich are the rich provide value in some form to the world. So when poor people are saying, oh man, he's worth billions, blah, blah, blah. What, why is there such a monetary gap between me and him? Motherfucker, because dude, he provides jobs. He yeah. provides healthcare yep. to family. He puts foods on family's tables. He gives to charity. There's a price gap and there should be. Poor people just want to hold, hand their, hold their hand out and complain. And I'm not talking about all yep. of them, of course not. But I just mean, dude, like a guy like that who does what he did and donated a million dollars, that's a, that's fantastic. That's providing like to the world, man. So again, you know, I agree, provi- dude. it's like, dude, Steve Jobs, like why is he worth so much money and or Bill Gates and blah, blah. Dude, Steve Jobs created the iPhone. You can talk on a phone with your loved ones. He provided that value to your lives. He should be worth the money he's worth. You know what I mean? 99, and the truth of the matter is, and we see this on Twitter now, okay? We see this on Twitter now, is <laughs> we see these people that are traders that have that have gone from making a thousand bucks today to making 200 grand. Sure. And when you give somebody, and this is so true, so true, um, when you give somebody wealth, the true being gets magnified. 
Yeah, right? Oh yeah, money's not their the root true of all evil. personality you know, just magnify is magnified. Who you are. Right. If you're an asshole when you're <laughs> poor, or if you fake being nice, right? Give somebody a million dollars and you'll see who they really are. Bro, you'll see if they're truly a good person. Dude, I'm going to tell you right now, if I got 100 million tomorrow, nothing would change except I would literally give more I'd be able to give more away. Like if I had a if I had a million today, just free liquid million yeah, just, dollars. Just free to do with whatever you want that's not, not tied up in fucking houses and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously that's else. where yeah, that's where the money's going. <laughs> right. <laughs> free liquid million. I can't honestly say that what would happen. I think I would become very reclusive. I don't think I would be as vocal. I think I would be probably like, I'm just gonna vacation for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i would okay. just i think i would honestly disappear <laughs> like donations and stuff like that i think that would be you anonymous know, and yeah it'd be dude i would do everything through pure anonymity it's just well the, you know it, the, there's an interesting thing with money and unfortunately you know so, and this kind of equates to trading guys is is there is a there is like joe just said money's a magnifier so you know the guys that have no money and then you make a little money you're going to see who you truly are you're if yep. you're a kind person you're going to be kinder because you have more options to be kind you have yep. more avenues. If you don't have money, then you come into money and you're an asshole. Guess what? You're going to hoard 40 Rolexes and then your family who can't pay their rent, you're just not going to care because you're kind of a dick. It's yep. just going to magnify that side. But there is fundamental differences between the genders, which I find extremely interesting. So I've studied, dude, I, my whole life I've studied. Most these. women that get rich are still kind. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Dude, check this out. Check this out. So, Every man has, its, has their know, test. <laughs> Joe, listen to this, dude. When I read this a while back, I loved it, man. Because the, the thing about money, man, is it's so interesting, is not only is it a magnifier, it's very much related to the gender. So, right? Like, so if, if a guy comes into money, like overnight, like he just has no money and then comes into money, the true mm -hmm. test for a man is like when sports, he has money, sports he, stars, like he wants athletes. every woman in the world. When a, oh, woman, yeah. when a woman comes into money, she feels like she doesn't need a man. So- <laughs> So there's like, there's like this like huge difference based on the gender, but not people. You see what I'm saying? Uh, Dude, funny. I love this shit. I could talk money all day, man. I love this. I like I just that's a funny it's a funny comparison it's pretty funny though and it's so true dude because it's like the minute uh, I've seen my friends dude the minute one gets money and he's really got money dude like I'm talking like Rolexes and E-classes and houses and stuff dude he just does it. he wants to be single immediately literally because he wants to see if he's desirable between all the way you know it's like it's like Lion right. Kingdom and then, and then a woman comes into money she's like I don't need this asshole <laughs> right 1000% man 1000%. It's too funny man. That's why you got to find someone and grow together man. You got to be like Conor McGregor with his wife dude. She, they have stood the test of time bro. Food stamps For to real. 100 mil. For real. For real. Guys, D who is Devlin trading questions? Is a <laughs> is is a bad chick. Oh man, for real yeah. dude. You got to find a ride or die. Yep. How do you balance using Think or swim with charting versus DOS for placing trades, giving the time it takes to place orders versus volatility in the market. Uh, myself personally, because I use both, I, I am so fluid when it comes to DOS, man. I don't even use these for charting unless it's a webinar, back testing, or I just want to post a chart because I think these are so much cooler to look at. But when it comes to trading, I'm literally only looking at DOS charts, just literally just DOS and montages on Cobra. Yeah, I uh, I think as a day trader, if especially if you're trading like um, if you're scalping, doing it in one single platform is definitely going to be what you want to do. You're definitely going to probably use DOS charts and yeah, I can everything show you guys within a real DOS quick platform. Here, guys, For me, check. I use both. I just put them side by side. Well, here's you know what, what you I mean? can do. Here's yeah, what you, you do, do what you do what you're doing. You just pop it out of the Thinkorswim platform and put it there. I mean, it's it's all the same. Yeah. So guys, if you're using one brain, right? Like a tower and it's, you know, running on two or three screens, say this background is DOS. If this is DOS, you can pop out a chart for Thinkorswim, put it over your DOS chart. And then here's all you do. Yeah. 
click this button, boom, it pins it, it. So if you click the DOS right here, like I'm clicking and clicking, this stays above. So you can literally have a DOS montage, right? I used to do this. You can have a DOS montage, but a, but a TOS chart. Yep. There's, there's so That's many ways probably my favorite things. layout it is DOS, dot, DOS. Dash montage. Dash montage. Dash montage. DOS montage and time and sales and then the the thinkorswim charts. I, oh, I yeah. just it, dude, it thinkorswim is just a cleaner chart. It's it just a really it's is, just man. such a superior charting platform to one almost. Of, one anything of my favorite things there. is to look at like a 15 day chart and just see how clean it is. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Now there is one thing that I deep. dislike heavily about thinkorswim versus DOS is Line charts can't compress. Line charts suck ass, like, dude. Yeah, they they suck on in TOS, think on or TOS. swim. Yeah, in DOS and everything else, they're so much cleaner. I'll show you oh what it looks man, like. they're beautiful. Uh, on DOS, do so think, beautiful. Style. I think I say yeah. Bow pivot lines and zombie. Oh shit, no. I I guess this is just pivot lines. I um I didn't. Say, let me make a line chart. I'll show you guys what it looks like. But Joe's right. It's just it's terrible. Uh, line. Just change your upticks and it doesn't really matter. You can leave it the same. Like yeah, that. it just, just it doesn't show wick, man. Minute. So some, something could literally wick up to here and you wouldn't even see it. Yeah, just make sure it's a one minute because then it's going to look Oh, that's uh, right. Yeah, yeah. different. Yeah. See, I never, dude, I don't even use these, man. See, I don't either. I don't ever go to a one minute. But on a line chart, dude, you got to use a one minute. That's the only way that it, it, it this is how I relate it. A one minute line chart is like a five minute or three minute candle chart. That's kind of how I relate it in my trading is if you're gonna use- That sounds accurate. Uh, it, Cause what it does is it just calculates the closing price, the average closing price in that time and it forms a curve, which forms a line. <laughs> and the same thing with a candle chart, you know, if you use a three to five minute candle chart, um, it's going to be very close to using a one minute line chart. You're going to see a lot of the same patterns. What and I would so, say though, guys, yeah. if you do do a line chart for God's sakes on TOS, just make it one color. Yep. Yep. Just, All just, one clean color like that. Just boom. Perfect. Yep. Black, black background, maybe white. And the thing I hate white. about them. What's that? Joe? It, it, the thing I hate about thinkorswim is if you zoom out just as far as you can go, do like a five day, one minute. Uh, hold on one sec. Yep. Yeah. See it now. Look, it makes you scroll to the left. See, I hate that. And in DOS, it just compresses it. It shows everything on that particular time frame Dude. in that <laughs> selection. And that to me, Dude, it's so much better than everything else related to that. Outside of that, no, nope. I'm I'm one thousand um, percent think or swim. Well, and here's the cool part, guys. The, you know, the one thing I will say about a line chart on TOS is if you have them kind of blown up like this, like this is big, right? Like if you have them small, like I really don't like them. But this is kind right. of cool because that's what she look, said. Yeah. In the morning, Joe and I really like the strategy that we talk about every week. We like a really beaten down chart under VWAP. And then we like to push to VWAP in the open. It is yep. really, really easy to see if you're having FOMO or not, man. Like say that was VWAP in the open. I know it changes as the day goes on, but like say that that was VWAP at like 520. Dude, mm -hmm. you can see that all of this, if you are hitting anything about here or under is FOMO. Yep. Like you can just see it so much more clearly in my opinion. Cause like maybe it's the contrast of the black and white. I don't know, but that is the one thing I really like about it is dude, literally like you can just see if you have FOMO or not. And I didn't trade happen today. Yep. You know, I wanted, dude, I wanted this so bad to get a, at least to five to start a scale in the VWAP. But dude, this was shit, you know, and same yeah. with, uh, same with IMV, same thing, man. This just died out the gate, bro. And then uh, what was another one? You know, ARPO. Just, God, just another one, man. But as you guys can see, you can really see the, the differentiator of FOMO versus non-FOMO and waiting for a desired entry.
every time I hear R A R P O, I always think of the dog food Alpo. Yeah, you think of Alpo. I think of Alpo every time. <laughs> uh, where in M I C should I look for T O R? Whoa, man, I'm struggling today. Where in M I C should I look for Thinker Swim chart setups, Check like best I'll settings for Thinker Swim, and any scripts I should add? Uh, well, that is go. in myinvestingclub.com, and then you log in. You're going to go to the videos tab, brother, when you are a member, and you're going to go down here to, where is it again? Setting up lines somewhere. Uh, yeah, it just keeps scrolling. Where are we? There. Where are we? I haven't looked at Setting this in a while. Lines. Setting up lines right here. Yeah. So that's chart setups. And then there's another area. It, right there is Tosh's full thinkorswim tutorial right there for yep. everyone. And then, and then, then I show I show at the end how to do how to set up lines and everything like that. Also, there's another section under my MIC. Just click the three stacks up there in the top right, and then go to my MIC. Making me sign in again. And then scroll down and right scroll up. TOS and DOS scripts, third ah, awesome. one in the le in the bottom there. So there is uh, all that stuff. So those guys on Twitter that are, that are selling that <laughs> freaking float rotation script, yeah, we give it to you for free. There's no reason to be paying Dude, for that everybody shit. Everybody just wants the, the easiest coding in the world, and yeah, it, there's no reason to pay for that stuff. So next question is. Can you please tell how it is best to interpret when you check a ticker in Finviz and you see shares outstanding versus the float? Um, we can go to Finviz if you want. Well, it's, it's a very simple question. What's it, you what don't even it need I Finviz. I just heard Finviz. Basically, when you go look at Finviz and you see shares outstanding and float, what does that mean? Oh, gotcha. Shares outstanding are the total number of shares the company has issued that insiders and retail can publicly can hold themselves. So these are going to be the shares that the CEO purchases the same thing. It, it, it's all the same shares. It's like the entire, um, the entire bit. Okay. The Yo, float, real quick, dude, look at how much FinBiz has just hoard themselves out. <laughs> you oh, got dude, an ad right here. It got, is an it, dude, that's it, oh, it's awful. Dude, that's why I use warehouse. I use Brave for that reason. Look at like this, the browser. Dude. Oh my oh, god! Oh, it's painful. It's painful. It's fucking painful, bro. This is like, I, like I feel like big busty milfs are in my area, but it's lying to me. Like, dude, look at that ads. Well done. It's an ad for advertising. <laughs> like that is enough. Like. Good Lord. Oh, it's like, dude, I'm telling you, it's like Pornhub, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so <laughs> shares outstanding is the total number of shares. About 30 um, million on Mara for Yeah, 29.45 million is the total number of shares the company has issued. And then the shares float uh, is 18.01 million, which is the number of shares available to trade in the public. Or retail so, shares. Correct. So if we were to do it and explain it like this, uh, let's say uh, go to um, Thinkorswim. Uh, sure. One sec. Actually, I'll just pull this. Yeah, and just put Mara on there. There we go. Fucking Actually, Mara can I just trash. go back to normal? You can <laughs> please go back to the camera. Dear God. Yes. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's so oh, good. It's so much better. Oh, it's so much better. So at the point, if we did it like this, um, if we did it like, let me, let me show you. Hang on. Hang on. I, let me go. do, let I'm me. just going to have to do this sure, and I'll buddy. just share the chart with you. 30 seconds here, folks. Oh, we're going back into a webinar? Yeah, we're going to go back into that. Posty, posty. <laughs> Don't pump your crypto all things, <laughs> Brian. Oh, guys, I, I, um, I may have said this, but I definitely want to make sure this is very clear. Uh, Brian is our tax guy. If you guys need any help with tax and how to save money, 
from going to Uncle Sam or figure out how to just understand everything, dude, we definitely have a section on our website where he can benefit you. Uh, so, uh, you know, th he's a wonderful trader in his own right. He learns how to save himself money every single year. He's a, he's a wonderful CPA. Uh, definitely reach out to our tax guide, Trader Tax CPA, which is Brian Rivera. Um, he, can, he can definitely get you started and help you out. Um, and we also have a section right here. Watch this video if you need help with taxes. And I will go as far to say that if you are a trader who trades a lot and you're a scalp, 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 you need Brian by the end of the year because dude, things like Washo rule will rape you if you don't have the right account. So just want to make that very clear. What's up, Brian? <laughs> so that chart right there is a chart of Mara, okay? This is where, this is that float rotation script that they're selling out there on Twitter for like 50 or a hundred dollars, which really? is free. It's free for all MIC members. Um, so what this says is uh, at, and this is a great explanation of float rotation, is if the shares float is 18 million, okay? At the time of this, right here where this plots this line that means that there was at least 18 million or more volume on the day and then this line it did another 18 million and then at this point in time it did another 18 million and this point another 18 million so <clears throat> at those points yeah exactly perfect there we go all right i'll move my i'll get my writing off of there so at these points in time the number of shares traded on the day is 18 million. And then the next time that it reaches here, it's 36 million. And then the next time here, it's 54 and then 72. And so that means it's rotated its float multiple times, which is indicating that if this thing is not dropping and the number of shares trading continue to rotate the float, there is an incredible amount of demand. If it's not dropping and the supply is still there, there's an incredible amount of demand, which is part of what we teach here um, is demand, supply versus demand and how that works and how you can protect yourself and how you can take advantage of that stuff. So, yeah. Dude, I love it. Uh, let's see. Didn't skip anybody's questions, Greg. <laughs> Greg on YouTube said, education is good. And then said, what the hell? You skipped my question. I said, no. Greg you didn't ask a question. Again, brother. Said, yeah. Hit that question in there. Hit How much is the maximum? Yeah. <laughs> How much is the maximum you guys are willing to pay on a locate? Oh, I, 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 my comfort zone is always 0 0.04. I really don't like more than that. I'm going to give you I guys kind know. of like a little equation. If it's, it's a simple. first red day, man. Dude, I've, I've literally- Yeah, if paid, it's first red day, it's a different story. Bro, I paid like 30 cents a share for a first red day. So 1% less than or equal to 1% of the price. If it's a $2 stock, I don't want to pay over two cents a share. And the hieroglyphics have emerged. <laughs> yeah, I know price didn't come out at all. And so, <laughs> so that that is my little. Uh, that's my, like kind of like my my judgment. Um, is uh, it? Oh, did wait? Did Greg ask a question in webinars and we just missed it? Oh, he's saying it on YouTube. Was oh, he a I member? Yeah, Greg Keen. Yeah, he's been a member been a member before i don't know if he still is but am i, I miss it? i don't think i missed it he said something about stop uh, loss uh, see it. he's been a member in here before and i i don't know if he's he still, still is oh uh, no, yeah still yeah is. just tell okay. him to repost well, it. i think i'm missing yeah it. just repost it man if if yeah sorry i can't find it <laughs> just post it on youtube or post it in chat uh like, we, we must have been talking about uh rolexes or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh would your strategies work with a ten thousand dollar account or do i need over 25k one hundred thousand percent they would work but you need the right broker yep couldn't agree more dude they'll work and with if you're not if you're not into account. day trading 
and, and stuff like that, then that's where coming into the large cap room and learning options could be a big benefit to you. Boom. Cause you can use a smaller account and grow it and use the same MIC strategies. Yeah, guys, we don't have golden secret indicators out there, man, where it's only designed yeah. for $50,000 accounts. We teach you guys how to trade whether you have a $20 account or $20 million. It doesn't matter. It's yep. the same. It's everything is going to make sense once you understand um, the Secret process. indicator, buy the dip. <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> dude, as pertaining to big caps, I couldn't agree more. For real. For real. <laughs> yep. It's a, dude, so I got to know. Oh, no, never mind. Sorry questions are still flowing. I'll get to my question for you later, but, um, oh yeah, I can do that. 1% of share price. So this is kind of like, uh, equals fair locate cost. So it's like, everybody's like, well, what's a fair price? to pay for this car? What's a fair price to pay for this house? What's a fair price for this? What's a fair price for that? My thing has always been 1% is a fair price for any old day trade. If it's like a bread and butter setup, like our first red day, death lines, it's like first green day, that would never happen because it's a long. <laughs> yeah. But on the short side, any setup on the short side, for me, um, I will go over 1% when it's like bread and butter because I, it, it, I, I know what I want to make. But if I'm just scalping, uh, that's the max I'm going to pay. Like if it gets over that, if it's like a $2 stock and it's like four cents a share, that's when I have to ask the question, is it easy for me to recoup that? Do I see an opportunity to be able um, to do that? market order locates <laughs> just wake up and order all of them <laughs> where's your market hard stop bro <laughs> look at brian's like he's had he's had two cups of tea today two cups oh, of tea he's the liddy oh jesus uh, uh, okay what's next here when you say short VWAP pushes, is that forum underneath it or above breaking down through it in pre-market? Question is for you, Tosh. Uh, say that one again. So when you say short the VWAP push, is that shorting when the stock is underneath it and bouncing to it? Or, sorry, is it from when it's already underneath it, like HEPA here? Or is it after breaking down through it and then shorting the push back into it, which right, let, let's, is let's the better keep it scenario. Simple. Let's keep it real simple. Uh, a stock that is trading very, uh, two things, a stock that is trading very far from pre-market highs and very far under VWAP and hasn't been close to VWAP for, I'd say at least 30 minutes from pre-market to the open, at least 30 minutes to an hour. If it hasn't even toyed anywhere around VWAP and is way under, VWAP is your desired entry. Now, based on room to scale, which I always give a lot, I will usually give to VWAP and then always, and this is a secret trick of mine that you can take from me if you want, you, you stealers, you little thieves, you, but <laughs> I go to the next top, always, and the base of the candle. So if I'm scaling VWAP, I'm scaling to right here. So anything above would be my stop out point. I'm not gonna go to here, cause dude, that'd be, that's like, that's like over a dollar. But when I the will... setup looks like this, I talked about this in the last one, and I'm just going to add to this real quick, is pay very close attention to this hill right here in VWAP. When that hill is there, what this means is that's the highest average price yep. of everyone out there. So this becomes, a, this becomes a level within itself, even if candles don't matter. This is a big psychological level, which the stock can do something like this, and you'll see a lot of volume start coming in where it's like, this is like that over under situation um, where if it gets close to here, you may want to start scaling here, adding here, stopping out here. Carry on. Joe, I love it. But it's as simple as that guys. So again, you know, um, 
we have certain, you know, setups at MIC. This isn't even one of our proprietary training setups. This is kind of like a Joe and Tosh kind of favorite, actually. Yeah, this but, is just our little how we trade VWAP. Yeah, literally. I and, and I'm a big VWAP trader. Like, I am always placing on VWAP. So, like, again, like, just to show you kind of what I did there and a little secret sauce is, um, even though there is no secret sauce and we're all in the <laughs> matrix, but what was another one? Secret IMD. sauce is by the dip. <laughs> it's as simple as by the dip. So, yeah. right here, guys, again, if I'm scaling VWAP, I want to go to the base of those candles and it coincides with a whole dollar number. Shocker. Yeah. Eight. Oh, yes. I like that. So, yes, this is a little far. I'm more what just showing that? you. I -W -M? Is what it, is that IWM? Say again, Joe. Is that the IWM? What? IMV, dude. Oh, Look IMV. At, can you believe this? Look Bad at, vision. This is disgusting, dude. Yeah, it's like tiny literally, on my screen. Sorry. Honestly, I'm move honestly that over I here. probably would even start a I can't see six, it. dude. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. IMV. I see it now. And then ARPO, let's just show the opposite. We'll show the inverse is this was bouncing around VWAP as me and Joe talk about a lot. So because this was opening very near VWAP, yes, it was far from pre-market highs. So it's definitely a short, but because it was bouncing around playing ping pong, I am expecting it to get to here mm -hmm. or I'm not shorting. I don't want to hit it VWAP. Now, mm -hmm. again, if you would have hit on this little pop today, yeah, you could have made some money, but I wouldn't have been comfortable to do so. And again, everything boils down to a comfort level. So if I'm shorting, starting where the previous tops are, which is right here, see how it's bouncing around this level, I am going to the base of the candles. That's where I'm scaling up to. 220 to Second question from that guy regarding this explanation is, would you change your mind if it's grinding up or going straight up like a spike towards VWAP? Okay, the, uh, two part, two part. It's a good question, but I always hate this question because of one thing. Dude, trading is as equal as much as feel as it is a science. And it literally depends on the ticker, man. I, I hate grinding action usually, but some dude, when it's literally like um, IMV, dude, there's no grinding action that's going to save this. This is so <laughs> It like, could fucking grind all at once. It could pretty Ricky that son of a bitch all the way to eight, but it ain't gonna help it. But yeah, exactly, bro. Exa I mean, this is this is 100 don't matter. Dead. This is 100 percent dead. But here's the thing, man. There are grinders where where grinders. There are grinding stops. Grinders. Oh my god, that just it's not this dead. And honestly, bro, I don't touch it. I don't because it just doesn't feel right, man. So again, it's a good yeah. question. I just hate the question because it's it's so much desired for your comfort level and honestly what you're feeling outside of all the criteria, all the setup, all the back testing. Sometimes, man, you can just feel an agenda, dude. Yep, one thousand or, or or a huge buyer, dude. You can just feel an accumulator. Yeah. I like to look at uh go to Finviz for IMV. Yeah. I, am I still on? And I'm gonna ask another question while while this oh, I am sick. doing that. Yeah, go to Finviz for IMV. Um One sec. let's see. Uh, if I put 30k in Cobra, do I actually need to use uh do I actually need to only use 3k because we have to have a minimum of 27? Uh no. <laughs> so if you put 30 grand in Cobra, you're just gonna have to keep over 25 in the account. If you drop under 25, you'll get flagged for pattern day trader. Yep. Um, and you'll have to wire in the money in order to get back over that amount. So yeah. Um I think 27 is their minimum. Yeah, 27 is about as and, low as they go. Yeah, I would always recommend if you can afford 30, put 30. Uh, and if you only have, if you have 27, I mean, I, I would, I wouldn't tell you to not open an account, but I would really advise waiting until you have 30 to open an account because the, the mental battle of only having $2,000 of padding from being a pattern day trader is like, oh, it's a son of a bitch. Dude, Val's it always talking just... about get get your life right first, man. If you yep. look, here's the thing: if you are putting yourself in any form of uncomfortability, because it always comes to comfort zone, you yep. are not going to trade right. So, 
if you're the guy that's like, dude, I finally did it, man. I got $25,300 together. I'm opening up a Cobra. <laughs> Guess what? Don't open up Cobra one, that day. One platform you, fee and you're under PDT. <laughs> bro, literally, you're not going to trade right because here's what's going to happen. Because you need a minimum, you're going to pretend like you have $300 in that account. Yeah. And you're going to, it's going to basically be like trading a $300 cash account. Dude, which is literally. Like, that's setting yourself up for failure. So and Joe's so, right, I mean, man. Joe's yeah. right. If you want to, you know, make the switch to something like Cobra or something, they're the best option, man. And, uh, but, but until you're at about like, why do you think Cobra has a 27,000 minimum, dude? They don't even Yeah, they set that up for these. success. You know what I mean? Like they set that up so people don't hit 25 grand. Yeah. And guys, they don't, they don't want to make that, the call. And they hate making them. that call. I've sat in the office with Chad and he's like, dude, I fucking hate calling people that fall under PDT. He's like, I hate making that phone call because it never works out. Hell yeah. It never Hell works yeah. out. What happens is most of the time you've ran out of savings. You've ran out of everything else. You've literally scraped every penny up off the ground everywhere that you possibly to come up with 25, 26 grand, 27 yes. grand. And then boom, you fall under PDT and you have no savings to put it back. Sorry. I was going to say something on IMV now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's get to that. Okay. Um, here, so we were talking about chart. that contrast of uh, grinding versus spiking action. My thing is I will pay attention to this right here. If it is institutional ownership, pretty high, and market cap fairly large, you know, that's going to mean that institutions are going to do everything in their power to save this stock because yep. they have a vested interest in the outcome. And so they're going to grind it back with an algo or anything else. You'll start seeing big bids flash and they won't let it drop. This yes. happens a lot in big caps when there's like a really bad PR that comes out and all of a sudden the market reaction is real shitty. But um, I'll go fuck in pre-market and then it'll just be like, boom, algos right at the market open and they'll just grind that shit back all damn day long. Because again, guys, and, remember yeah. as retail traders, we have a serious edge during a certain time when in the first hour of the open, when algos are not like bum rushing you all day because the retail traders are literally overpowering it, especially in small caps. Yep. But here's the thing, dude. The, there are times to trade and there, there are things to trade. So when something may look like this or dude, maybe institutional ownership is 40%. Maybe this is a higher market cap. You just right. know that the edge is a little bit. You just less know they're going to try to fuck the shorts. You know what I mean? You know, sure. they're going to try to grind them out. You know, they're going to try to put it back up. So oh, I for mean, sure. Yeah. When adding to a position, do you calculate a new average in advance? No. Oh no, no, no. I can't do that type of math on the fly. And if you can fucking, you shouldn't be trading. You should be running some kind of accounting firm. <laughs> yeah. If you can calculate averages in your head, like positional averages, like, like that and be at and be right. you shouldn't be trading. You should be running a firm, like an actual, like accounting firm. You should be, you should be like a, con, a, a comp trailer. Yeah. A yeah, for sure. Like <laughs> don't, don't, don't fuck with that. You don't need to do that. <laughs> oh man. Do you teach do you teach options for day trading or swing trading? I'm asking because I'm only interested in day trading, in and out. Yep, we teach both. Hell yeah. Would you change your mind if it's gr oh wait, that's the same question. Whoops. Tosh, do you ever play the first resistance short without it getting to your lines? Do you uh, ever no, break no, your do rules, not. Tosh? No, do do you ever it? break your rules? Let me ask you that question. <laughs> do you ever break your rules, Tosh? Hell yes. <laughs> no, here's the thing, man. Here's the thing. Only I if am, she asks nicely. I am always waiting for my lines. There is one exception to make me a reactionary. So here's the thing. There are two kinds of traders, right? There are the guys who preset orders and limits at lines, which I do. There is yep. one thing that's going to make me trade on the fly, and that is a death candle. So yep. I've made that very famous in the past or talked about it, you know, a lot during these webinars. If, you know, if IMV is trading and it doesn't make it to my line, say it doesn't make it to whatever I wanted in the morning, I would have probably hit 650. Say it doesn't make it to 650. Say it makes it like 620 and then rockets. And I mean, rockets back down. 
I will hit a pop after that because that is weakness that I know I can scale into on the next pop with a predefined risk of the top of that stuff. Death. Oh, Myos, dude. Myos. Here, check this out. That's actually the next question. Can you yeah. explain Myos short today? It oh, happened yeah, quite dude. a lot. It's happened quite a lot lately. So before you go into the Myos explanation, let me just say this really quick. Another question is, it seems like this site is not for beginners rather a platform that is for traders that have a moderate understanding of trading. Uh, Let me explain there. In these Q and yes, in these Q and A's, we will get into trading questions. That's the purpose of the Q and A's is to ask trading related questions. So if you have trading related questions, please ask. Also, since there is a feeling that it's not for beginners, that was the purpose of the trading basics course which I, I put together over the last two years. And that is also the purpose of the accelerator course. It's to get somebody that has zero understanding. You literally don't need to know anything. Yes. You don't need to know You don't need to know a single definition. You don't need to know what a stock is, what anything is. I will teach you from the ground up, knowing absolutely nothing, start to finish. Okay? Let, let me, That's let me what the like accelerator this, course was for. Joe, let me, let me say it like this, because th that is a good question. Number one, I can say without a doubt, and I, I, just, I just know this because I've been trading for seven years and I've been in every room possible before we created MIC, for God's sakes, there is no better room for a beginner trader specifically. But within this realm, if you hear us talking about stuff moves and institutional ownership and all that, you have to understand whoever asked this question, you know, whoever may be thinking about this question, you are entering a new career field. What do you expect it to be? It easy? Yeah. There are things you're you gonna got to write learn. down what you know. You got to write down the terms that you hear. Like you hear stuff moves, you hear death candles. Okay, take notes, write that yeah, down. I mean, I mean write but, that brother, down the and then go that, ask questions. The things that we have in place. Oh yeah, this dude, MIC is a university literally for trading, but here's the thing. Yep. When you start, dude, it's not going to be, you're not going to understand everything in a day, but here's the thing. Look, look, if you're a brand new member, the first thing you do is you open up the MIC starter pack. What is the starter pack? Oh, lingo of everything Bunch we're talking about right now. Oh, yep. then going into how to read a candle, how to read yep. a bullish or bearish reversal pattern, how to read a double and triple top, anything, a stuff move, you know, dude, literally what we're talking about right now, that we have a whole section on stuff moves. Let's go into Myos. Let's show the psychology of what this is and why I hit it at VWAP today. Myos, and not, not big because this was like, dude, I was scrambling. Like I was so bummed that HEPA and IMB didn't pop. I was like, all right. Then Myos made me a reactionary trader. I was waiting for something like this. Then it happened. It didn't pop high enough, so I didn't get much. But here's the thing. You have a stock that's going up, up, up. This is strong. This is not something you want to short, man. This is pure front side. This is what we teach in MIC process of, dude, you want to be a short seller on weak stocks. You want to hit the HEPAs, the IMVs, the AR, what is it? ARPO or some shit? Alpo? Yeah. But Alpo. then <laughs> when a Myos comes and it puts longs in a situation of, oh, dude, I got to bail. That's this moment you can hit pops. I am willing to chase these a little bit because this is like one of my favorite setups. I mean, you have to think, dude, you're a long buys trader and then this candle happens. You're really scared now. And that's what happens. It sold off and this was the start of the end. I didn't think we'd get this kind of decline, but because I didn't get a reshort up to, I was waiting the 270 level for a reshort like around this time. But of course, dude, this is identifiable. So this was that moment where you go, oh, I am now a reactionary trader. It just happened. Boom, I'm getting it on a pop. It's kind of yep. like a, it's kind of like a last minute kind of thing, but it works if you know what to do. Yep. You're waiting for the stuff move. <laughs> Two way. Two way. I'm here. We can start now. Great. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Sometimes you can. Sometimes no, yeah, you can like... still get a great entry a few cents below your initial line. Yeah, you know, sometimes you can stay, you can, you can take a little FOMO starter. But so, it's so here's how I do that. And that's a great question. HEPA, these were the lines I'm waiting for, right? If it would have made it up to 490, depending on the feel of the stock, this is half feel, half science. If it felt heavy, if it felt like someone was putting on, you know, a big seller or a big short, you know, big things like that, or someone's, you know, not accumulating on the long side, I may start in at 490 with the intention to scale up but I will go much smaller than what I would have hit at VWAP yep. had it made it. 
Yep. Scaling is the key, guys. Scaling your positions. Are your risk reward scenarios based off patterns or do you have a golden risk reward ratio? There is no golden risk reward ratio. I am always eyeballing it. If, if yep. it, here's what I here literally do. This is what I, I, do. I literally haven't calculated risk reward in months. Like Joe, I just trade yeah. the level and I know the risk and I don't, I may go back after the trade and been like, boom, four to one son. Yeah. But in the middle of the trade, I'm just like, please, dear God, don't stop me out. <laughs> Just, guys, I'm going to show you a cool trick. That's all I'm hoping trick. for. I'm going to show you a cool trick, guys. Check this out. If you are ever wanting to gauge risk reward, I want you to do what I do. Do, the, do this one thing, especially if you're a beginner. I need you to be a visual learner. Draw a line at the highest the stock has gone, maybe pre-market and or intraday. Draw a line where the move started. Where I mean absolute dead bottom. Then draw a line where it's trading at. That's how much meat is left on the bone. And I mean a hundred percent of the meat and you never get a hundred you know what i mean like you almost mm -hmm. never get on dude we used to get them to where they faded red on the day but yeah, that doesn't not happen anymore, anymore. seriously <laughs> so guys, dude, if, this used to be my favorite fucking pattern dude, and, it, and you just hold it until it goes red on the day and that shit would end up like minus 10 percent red on the day and it was dude. like Plus thirty percent. So back open, in the day, dude, it like, would have oh. it would have broken this line and gone into the volume. Oh game. yeah, it would have been three fifty by the close, and it would have been yeah. But nowadays, nah, my I just, point <sighs> because everything gets bought up, guys, in the Robin Hooders. And, yeah, dude, Edson knows, man. Yeah, old Edson's days, the old dude. days. Yep. All you need to yep. do is sh blindly short anything within this realm, and you're good, <laughs> dude. That. That was my favorite pattern, bro. Is just Guys, you just short the morning push on this setup and hold it till it's red. Here's the thing with pumpers through and through in this industry, this is what I do every single morning and to calculate risk reward. And I just eyeball it. I go, here's the top of the move that it, that it reached to. Here's the potential. Uh, it's broken down. Here is the absolute dead bottom. Here's where it's trading at. Oh, wow. Even if I top ticked and it was perfect, this is all I can make. And that's asking for a lot. This. Yep is technically where it can go. Now, if I'm hitting something at VWAP, I have now completely put a lot, a lot of, of, got a lot of room to waiting. make a profit. Dude, that's, that's at least a, like a, I'm telling you, man, it's just, you just got to eyeball this shit, dude. Where's the risk reward if you're shorting right there? Yeah. Dude, just Not a eyeball lot. where the, like eyeball, bro. Yep. Like, I don't even know. Like, I'm trying to make it as lame in terms as I can, literally. Yep. I have yeah, now just so to answer so that, much there is better no risk golden. reward. There's no golden risk reward ratio. There's none, dude. Does MIC offer a course with the monthly membership, at least with the MIC proprietary strategies? Yep. That is in the Traded Basic Series. That is in the Trading Fish Academy. That is in the video library. There's, you know, 800 plus videos in there. Um, Many of it is live market recorded action with commentary on it. Yep, uh, that are that is available to monthly members. So, and the the accelerator, if you want to catch yourself up to speed super fast, then um, that is going to be the recommendation. I would, yeah, I would go with. Hi, Dude, Joseph, one yeah. question uh, for low hanging fruit setups: Do you wait for the open? For a potential spike, or do you enter pre-market? Sometimes I, it's 7 a.m. market times. Day. Yeah, sometimes at 7 a.m. market times, stocks tend to spike and never come back at the open. Yeah, that's the nature of trading. Uh, well, this, so, this, is, this is literally one of those ones. that It's just a dead dud. It's a dead duck. Like, yep, yeah, I'm, it's, waiting for, um, <coughs> I'm waiting it's, for... I'm waiting for... Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, it, it, I personally, um, in my trading, have always found that when I would take an entry during pre-market, I would almost always have an opportunity to get back in at that entry or damn near it with a better risk definition after the market opens. Hell yeah. So there's rare cases. And for instance, when I'm in pre-market, I can't go look at other stocks either. Like I can't build a watch list. Like I'm just glued I'm glued to this stock. Please don't spike. Please don't tank. Like I am just glued to it. And so I don't like trading pre-market and I never will. I, I think I, I don't, man. Is, I'd rather, I'd rather you know, miss a whole day of trading than try to trade pre-market. I'd rather. Miss I would too. I would too. And I, I, I there's, 
it's the same thing with after hours. I would rather trade. I would rather only trade during the market hours than I would never want to trade after hours. I'd never want to trade pre-market. I just don't like it. I don't like the action. <laughs> we sound like, we sound like 10 year old. I don't like it. I, I don't, don't like it. it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, during pre-market, how to differentiate a late print versus the 8 a.m. volatility. <laughs> Have TOS print. versus DOS. <laughs> Yes, have TOS versus DOS. It's Dude. TOS clears up those bad prints many not times. Print. It will, yeah, not one bad print in HEPA and in on DOS. And there are no, there's no eight AM volatility prints. It's always late prints. It's just late prints. There's no different prints that happen. Those trades did not happen. So they maybe happened earlier, but they are not happening in that moment. And the candles get all fucked up. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, got one here. Sorry for asking again. Any comments? Oh, did I miss any? I might have missed any. Hold on. I don't think so. I was. Yeah, Nick was that. asking about SRNE. Yeah. We'll definitely cover that. Um, that one's just a grinder, man. Yeah, I've looked yeah, at SRNE this... several times. There's there's some kind of there's a catalyst. I'm sure it has something to do with coronavirus behind this sock, and so I'm. I'm not shorting it. I'm not um, trying to pick a top in any way, shape, or fashion. It's a damn grinder if there ever was one. Nick, look at this. This so, is the daily. Yeah. This is not what I'm looking to short, man. This is strong. This is very yeah, strong. So, yeah, I mean, you can get a short out of this. I mean, look at look at today's action. But, again, it's like you technically could have hit outer lines, which this kind of was because it's going to the tops, like up to here, up to – you got to cut it at 15, though. Because yeah. this thing is a grinder, and there was a short on this today, but this is not my setup, man. This is just not what I like. But it, it I will say it this way: it trades really thick. Does it? It Does is it trade really thick. It is just gross on the short side. Like it. Oh I shit! Mean, Seven different vaccines. Get yeah, it, it, dude. They're, they're. I mean, it's just that I, I don't. I just don't recommend. I, I just don't. I, I, I just, I'm not into it. Damn, bro. SRNE I'm thick. Not into it. Dumb thick. I'm not it. I, I, I'm not. I'm not into it on the on the short side. Long me, side, me cool, either. great. Yeah. If you're still in it, fantastic. I know Tay is. Uh, I think. Um, <laughs> I think our buddy Clow PD uh, Clow Puerto Rico, the PR, the PR man. I think yeah. he's long too, but I know several people that are long and holding this thing and have been long for God knows how long. Yeah. Uh, weeks. I'm months. looking at daily charts like this, um, bro. Yeah, exactly. I'm looking, you know, I, I, I mean, Nick, I ain't looking at daily charts like this, bro. Yeah. I ain't I'm looking, looking at, that fucking at chart. shit like this. Yep. I want it to be a pile of steaming trash. And here's the thing. The market cap of SRNE is 2.3 or 2.6 billion. Yo, not it's not cap. a small cap. It's not a small cap anymore. New. This is this is like playing with the big boys now. Oh God, what are these one minute? Oh, ugh, I gotta switch this back. <laughs> You're like, gotta get oh, that. Oh God, I haven't looked You're at like, a one minute chart in years. What is going on? Ugh. What is this nasty? Cancel. No, just cancel that and then delete it. Oh God! Oh, you removed your three minute, your five day three minute. Yes, I oh. did. I didn't even notice for a second. I was like, God, this feels weird. Oh, oh, we're back. We're oh, back. It's all good now. Dear God, big pile of something. <laughs> the thing in time we all know is this end. But yep, yep, time wrong is dead sentence. Yeah, it's that company used to be the biggest steaming pile of trash, and probably still is. Um, but hell, the chart is the chart. Volume is volume. Price action is price action. I mean, let her go. Let her run. <laughs> it could it could do a Kodak. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. No, nah, it's crazy. <laughs> Dude, look at look at. I mean, if this is when I see shit like this, man. This is a camera company that said their flashes will like help the you know corona dude i'm just like yep. anything is possible in the market man and people buy this i honestly out. think here's my thesis on on srne is 
they're testing all of these COVID-19 programs to push their stock price up to dump shares to raise money for other drug trials that they are taking way more seriously. Is yeah. SRNE is nowhere close in the running as Moderna and Novavax. So mRNA and NVAX. Cerna oh is just, is the redheaded stepsister that wants to be part of the gang. She's the third wheel on the date. That's, that's, that's what Cerna is. My, my thesis is they're just going to grind it, grind it, grind it, grind it. Yeah, we're working on seven vaccines. Okay, if you really had a formula that was working, you'd be working on one fucking vaccine. <laughs> I was just going to say, with, wouldn't you with be working testing on testing those two? strands? Like, you, would be, you wouldn't be working on seven. Like, that is just Brother, some pump shit. This isn't shit. to chow, man. Right. Yeah, we're not here to get seven different types of meat. It's a pile of shit, but piles of shit. <laughs> Although, let's run. be real. When you go to Fogo de Chao, even there, you only focus on the picana. So. Right. Oh, bro. Oh, God. Don't talk to me about that. I want that right now so bad. <laughs> I just sparked the oh. Texan in Joe. <laughs> It, it's it I, i'm i'm like yeah it's an all-in-one test okay all right. oh god okay yeah one vaccine and seven different petri dishes oh, you want to know what okay. kills coronavirus guys i will tell you what kills coronavirus in a petri dish gasoline pour gasoline on it that'll kill it it <laughs> dude it's like i never understand these drug companies with oh it kills this in a petri dish Okay, you know what also kills this in a petri dish? Gas, bleach. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, like, Joe. We're gonna we're gonna inject your bottom. What's yeah? Gas. Exactly. I mean, Edson said <laughs> can't drink that. Of course, exactly. So why are we caring about whether it kills something in a petri dish or not? It's stupid fucking chemistry, dude. I went to college <laughs> the for the longest Joe. time with pharmaceuticals in mind. Oh shit. <laughs> organic chemistry and all that shit every professor i ever met was like dude you can kill any virus in a petri dish really you can is kill that right? almost anything it do think about it think about it burn that shit like yeah, just literally. set it on fire it's like dude it's the same it's the same you can kill almost anything in a petri dish and joe just created the next pandemic like yeah <laughs> <laughs> fucking diesel gasoline bleach you know it fucking comet comet that cleans your comet. shower can kill a lot of stuff yo then i'm long like, comet bro like it <laughs> i don't know if you've ever sprayed heavy duty oven cleaner and then got that shit in your nose and thought you were gonna die yeah you spray heavy duty oven cleaner on coronavirus in a petri dish and it's dead like <laughs> It's just dumb, bro. I it's just proud, dumb hard pump stuff. shit. It's just dumb pump. It's all it is. Oh. And a props to the people that can catch that stuff. I'm I'm in love with it. But Joe, I, I think you need to team up with Elon Musk and take us to <sighs> Mars, bro. We need a brain like yours on the front lines. <laughs> <laughs> and the cooking skills to match. You're right, yeah, Quinn. I'm a Clorox man. <laughs> oh, shit, you guys are awesome. Oh my god, dude. Is it, dude, we have two minutes. Yeah, we do have two minutes. You know we what, had guys, a lot of questions wrap, today. Let, let's wrap this up with um, if you didn't get your questions answered, just d text us, DM us, do something. Um, I'm voting for Joe Kelly in 2024. Um, hit me up for promos, guys. 213-458-5997. The live event. Um, dude, we, we got the accelerator course. We have wonderful deals right now in all packages of MIC, except a single month. The single month stays the same, but other packages we do. Uh, just hit me up, guys. We'll get you in the club. We'll let you know. Um, you know, it, every single week, man, we like to make this fun. We like to make it kind of like a talk show and also just show that traders are just real people, dude. We're just, we're just here doing the damn thing, trying to make some money, clicking buttons every single day, yep. rinse and repeat. Um, you know, love on the community and then go about our lives, man. That's what about, that's what it's about. So, you know, if you think MIC is a great fit for you, we'd love to have you. And again, you're gonna not want to miss this event, man. Even if you're not a member and you just pay the 97 bucks, dude, Bao is literally going to be live streaming and showing you exactly how he does what he's done for yeah, 20 years. This is not, this is not a pump du jour conference okay this Seriously, is not a man. this is not a penny stock conference where we go and give a couple presentations and the entire time that we're there our goal is to sell you something no that is not the goal you paid good money to be here in this 
uh, actual boot camp. You pay good money, and that's what you're there for. You are going to be taught how to trade. You're going to be able to watch Bow Trade Live. Dude, I would have paid a thousand dollars to watch Bow Trade Live. Bro, I, I would have bro yeah, I, I would have, I would have given my car seven years ago. Like I would have done nasty shit. Really like, nasty back really alley type dirty fucking rainbows. Ooh, man. Your thinker swim and my thinker swim <laughs> in my ears. <laughs> <laughs> nice finish on the market. 332, 03. If you guys have seen Bad Santa too, dude, I'm telling you, just nasty things in a dark alley. I'm telling you, bro. I mean, I'm I would it would have just been, it would have been, it wouldn't have made it on Pornhub. Like that would have been, <laughs> it, it would have been that nasty. That they would have been like, nope, mm -mm, that's, that's banned. And that's banned. We can't show that. It would have been, I'm telling you, man, it would have been, that is it so would have been rough. And, and that's why I'm always like, I've heard people that are like 97 bucks. I don't have 97 bucks right now. If you don't have $97 right now, you don't need to be trying to do anything you need well, to be you, getting your guys, life if, right if you don't have if look here's the thing and we got to be a little bit real with you and then we'll let you go if you don't have 97 dollars to commit to your education and at least see about education you need to get your life right before yep. starting investing then you just ain't serious about your life that's just yeah, the yeah, reality get, of it. Get you just ain't right, serious man. about it you just ain't Seriously. serious about it i'm telling you i dude no. i've spent i've spent nearly 10 grand on educational content over the years Oh, easy. And easy. I, I, when I think about it, does it make me want to puke in my mouth? Yeah, a little bit. But do I regret it? No, not at all. 100%, not at all. Bro. I don't regret it at all because, I, because I've made plenty more than that to make up for it. That, yeah, exactly right, man. Yeah. Exactly right. It, it's, I mean, Bow Hub. There's, oh, no, there's no better site than Bow I don't even want to watch Hub. that. Category top tick. I don't even want to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> The yeah, hub. we are crazy. That's going to be him at the Asian Underground in San Francisco. Oh, God. <laughs> Joe, always a pleasure, bro. I love you, man. Yeah, buddy. Until next week, man. Until Guys, next you're week. awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Attend the live event. Hit me up with questions, and uh, we'll do it next week, man. Seriously. Adios. See you, Joe. See you guys.